Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to P3D. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today and you're probably thinking, Darren, what could we possibly be doing uh, that's different? And I'll tell you, for one we're not on VATSIM, um, so that's different. Um, but the main thing I'm going to be doing today is teaching you guys, and this is a beginner's tutorial on how to fly the PMDG 737. Now I've seen I have seen a lot of uh, tutorials that go in depth about everything and all that sort of stuff, but I do know there's some people out there that just want to know the basics, not go on VATSIM and just have a bit of fun, um, and they want to know how to start up the aircraft without having to do it all long and through sequences and all that sort of stuff, because um, it can be a little bit challenging. Um, so today I'm going to explain how we do it, how we start up, um, and how we get to the phase where we're about to push back. Um, I'm going to release more videos in the future that go over other bits of flight, but today we're going to be using a stock Ryanair aircraft um, and showing you how I would go from cold and dark to ready to push back um, while my catering people float off into space. So hopefully it should be a bit of fun, hopefully you learned something, um, and let me know if you want to see any more of these tutorials below, or if you're just thinking it's a waste of time. Either way, let me know and uh, I'll see you on the flight deck. Okay everyone, and we're now on the flight deck of the 737. Now, a couple things uh, you're going to want to take note of. Um, the cockpit itself, as you can see here, is split into different sections, and each different section performs a different role. So we'll start off from the bottom. This is your communication, transponder, and weather radar. They are the three main components. So your communication for your captain and your co-pilot on either side. Uh, so this is where you would enter any frequencies, um, as you can see here, and switch between, uh, for example, the PA and uh, ATC. Um, up here you can see your cargo fire uh, switches, just in case you have uh, a fire in the cargo hold. Right below it, uh, this is for you Active Sky users, you can see the weather radar, um, and we'll get to that later. And down below you can see the transponder. Um, where your squat code will go. You can also see a few lights, rudder trim, stab trim and the flight deck door switch. So those, that's your bottom bit here. Moving, if you just move a little bit forward, we'll get to the throttle quadrant. So of course you've got your two throttles here, your speed brake, flap lever, parking brake and your engine and APU fire switches. We'll test them in a bit. Moving even more forward, we now get to the flight management computers, uh, which are probably the most important part of uh, the aircraft. Uh, these are the computers that run the autopilot and all of the onboard systems. And you can also see um, an ECAM display um, here as well. Looking along to the sides, mostly just light switches as well um, on either side. And uh, ground proximity flap inhibit, gear inhibit and terrain inhibit override switches down here as well. Now moving on to the main MFDs, um, MDFs, <laughs> MFDs, MDFs, um, you've got your navigation, um, altimeters, all that different stuff along here. Auto brake, um, speed reference, lights, um, gear stick and clocks. Uh, and moving up now to the M, um, MCP, which is your autopilot, um, basic autopilot, speeds, heading, altitude, vertical speed, courses, flight directors. Um, all the throttles and navigation and mapping. Also, you've got master caution, fire warning, and uh, different system analysis here. Compass, compass lights, and now we move up onto the overhead panel. We're going to start from the bottom. Uh, these are your bottom lights, landing lights, runway terminals, taxi, your APU switch, um, your engine start selectors, and your ignition selection switch, and your exterior lights. That's your logo and your anti collision. We'll get to them in a bit. Uh, moving up, going from left to right, you've got your fuel pumps here, center fuel pumps and wing fuel pumps and of course your cross fuel valve. Uh, moving across you can see your uh, generators, um, engine generators, APU generators, the EGT uh, down here as well and your window wipers in case it's raining. You can also see the ground power switch is here as well. Uh, fasten seatbelt signs, chimes, a flight attendant call and ground call. Cockpit voice recorder and pressurization. Um, we always leave this on automatic. I will explain why in a bit. Uh, just switching some of these around. Um, we'll turn all these off because we do want it to be in a bit of a cold dark just so we can do everything ourselves. Uh, air conditioning, um, packs, uh, circulation fans, uh, air conditioning is up here. Window heats, um, pro peats, anti ice, 
um, hydraulic demand switches, electronic hydraulic demand switches, uh, your battery switches, your standby power, your flaps, your yaw dampers, um, and all that stuff is here. And moving up to the top, well, this is the bit that no one really looks at that much. We've got our oxygen mask switch, um, some test switches, um, and our IRS um, switches and the dome light. All of that we will get to in a bit. So that's a brief, very brief rundown of uh, the cockpit. So this tutorial is meant for beginners, and by beginners I mean you've got no idea how to fly, you are used to flying the default uh, PMDG, not f uh, default PMDG, default P4D or FSX aircraft, and you have no clue how to fly this thing, because it's brand new and all the buttons, there's so much to know, so much to do, how do I fly it? Well, we're going to do that now. So we're going to do a couple of things just before we start. We're going to check that we have either parking brake or wheel chocks set. Well, we have wheel chocks on the ground, so wheel chocks will be fine for us. Um, now we're going to want to check that we have all of our information, any necessary information that we're going to be using for the flight on board with us today. And that's good. We have that information on board with us, which is good. Uh, we're also going to want to check that we have some form of uh, stairs, doors. We have that in the form of GSX. We have it there. Obviously, that's not required. I'm going to go first over to the overhead panel and to the battery switch. Now you're going to see um, the battery switch, it says BAT and it'll be in the off position. Simply put it into the on position and close the guard. Same with standby power, you'll see standby power should be in the off position. Switch it to disconnect, it'll go into drive, close the guard switch. Now you're going to want to keep this in the BAT position and change the um, AC switch, standby power. Okay. And you're going, to want, you're going to want to check for DC, you're getting 28 volts, and AC, you're getting 400, you know, frequencies per minute, or whatever it is. Um, I'm no electrician, so I couldn't really tell you. But that's when you want to make sure you're getting, if you're not getting that, then you're not getting sufficient power to the aircraft, as far as I know. So you're going to want to check that your electronic, hydro, uh, electronic demand pumps are off, and your fuel pumps are off, which they are, so we can move on. Come down to the master uh, caution here, just extinguish it. You can extinguish any warnings that you have on the aircraft right now. It's all fine. Lights, well, what lights do we want? We're going to want to put the logo light on, uh, and we'll put the wheel well on as well, and we're going to turn the dome light on, just for a little bit of extra lighting in the cockpit. So we've got our lights, everything's comfortable, and check that your cabin utility power are on and your pass seat power is on. They should already be switched on, but in case they're not, switch them on anyway. So now we're ready for some extra power. Go down here to the ground power available switch, and we're going to connect ground power. As you can see, this powers a lot more electricity to the aircraft, and if we turn this to uh, ground power, you can see we're getting a lot more electricity through the aircraft. More systems can be powered up, um, and more things can run. If we come over to the emergency lights, we arm the emergency lights and close the guard switch. Um, make sure the external lights are in the configuration you want, by the way. Um, you can put the wing on if you want, they're not necessary because we're in daytime operations um, and all that stuff. Now we're going to be uh, expecting passengers on this flight, so we're going to turn the chime on and set the fasten seatbelt signs to auto. Notice that there's no, no smoking, it's just the chime because obviously you don't smoke on planes. <laughs> So um, that sort of stuff. At this point, you can add any extra fuel if you're wanting. If you're actually going to do a flight, you can add any extra fuel that you're wanting. Uh, set that all up uh, right now. Uh, getting a little bit of FPS drop, probably because it's raining outside. Um, put the recirc fans onto auto, and you're going to want to turn pack left and pack left onto auto, and bring your isolation valve onto auto as well. Um, and you can put the engine bolts on as well if you want, if you so desire. Check that the temperature in the cabin is something that you're happy with. Uh, continue this cabin and put these all to automatic. It normally just works out fine. Um, but if you really want to muck about with it, then you can. So now that we've got sufficient power to the aircraft, what we're going to do is we're going to run through some simple checks. So first check we're going to do is the cockpit voice recorder. Hold it down. Test. Green light should come up. And it's working fine. The next test we're going to do is we're going to come over and test our all the throttle and FMC warning lights. And we're going to test all the lights on the aircraft by flicking this switch upwards. That is a left click, uh, sorry, right click on your mouse. And now you can see that all the lights should be eliminated on your aircraft. Check for any burst, broken or not working bulbs. And then you can put it back to normal 
dim it if you so require, if it's night time and it's really bright. Coming down here now, we're going to check our fire suppression systems, left and right, and fault. Check that we, uh, you have a uh, master, uh, master caution overheat. And switch it to the right, confirm that we are getting the bell is ringing, wheel well, overheat switches are on, lights are eliminated, and the fire warning switch has come on. It has, which is fine. Do the same for the cargo fire. And it's working fine. So fire suppression is working absolutely fantastic. Nothing wrong with it uh, whatsoever. Now what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to start to set up um, for the flight. So come all the way back up to the very tippy top um, of the panel and you'll see here the IRS switches that we looked at earlier. And you're going to want to select them both to nav. You'll see they'll say on DC but they'll change quickly to a line like so. So now, if we're filling in a flight plan, we can come down to the flight management computer. Now, as I said earlier, the flight management computer is one of the most important systems um, on the aircraft because um, it basically controls uh, your autopilot, where you're going, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So if you just click FMC, Positional Initialization, and we're going to put in our reference airport now. If you don't know the ICEO code of your reference airport, just look it up. We're at Glasgow today. Glasgow's ICEO code is Echo Golf and then Papa Foxtrot Glasgow International. We're at stand 4, so we're going to put in gate 4. And then it says enter IRS position. Now you'll notice that we don't have altimeter or map yet. So we'll go onto the next page, take your GPS left, bring it back to the previous page and insert it into the IRS. You'll see that you'll have now your altimeter and your map. If that doesn't happen immediately, give it a couple seconds to align. You might just be running through quickly and it hasn't had proper time to align. You can also clear any messages about dual operations being restored because that's not really important right now. Go into your route and if you've got a company route, that's fine, but we'll put in our origin of Echo Golf, Papa Foxtrot, um, and let's just say our destination is going to be London Heathrow. Because why not? We're going to make Ryanair go off the rails. Um, our flight number, well, we're Ryanair, but we're just going to do this as test, call sign test, and we're going to be under the assumption that we're going off runway 23. So as you can see, runway 23 has now been selected for us. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select a departure or an arrival. So we're going to go into departure, runway 23, and let's just pick a random departure. Normally it would be the normal one hotel, but just because we're rebels, we're going to pick Dean's Cross 6 Alpha. Um, so we'll pick Dean's Cross 6 Alpha. If we go on to our legs page now, we can see that that uh, instrument departure has been um, put in. And you know what? That's all we need um, for our level test flight. Obviously, you would put in a full flight plan if you're flying on that somewhere anywhere else. But for, day, for the purpose of today's test flight, that's all we're actually going to need. Um, so we'll just, I don't know, we'll go into the arrivals. We'll select ILS. Uh, zero nine left, um, dive one foxtrot, I don't know, and we'll just connect them up so we got a route going and um, just to immerse ourselves there. That's our route. It's a very quickly put together route, but it should work. So now that we have our route together, if you hit the route button, you also can see that this is the active route. And now we've got two options, alternate destination and perf initialization. You want to go into the perf initialization. Now click once, you'll get your zero fuel weight. Click twice, it's entered. The reserves can be whatever you want. I'm just going to put a random number in there. We'll take 1.2 reserves. And the cost index, uh, Airline Pacific, whatever you want once again. Or Ryanair, I don't know, we'll just say 30. Cruising altitude, well we're going to pick a cruise altitude of I would say about 31,000 feet. Sounds fine. Um, Cruise winds, no clue, but we're going to say it's like 2, 5, 4, uh, I don't know, 25. Obviously, this is information you can take from Active Sky if you want. Um, and outside air temperatures, we're going to go for minus 35. And transition altitude, 6,000 feet. Now, here's a very important step. Do not forget to hit the execute button. If you don't hit the execute button, this will not become active. Make sure you hit this button here. You'll see it now becomes active. Go into your N1 limit. We'll select uh, 39 for sale, 39, 
there we go. Um, this is all airport Pacific stuff, um, we're at Glasgow, we'll just climb power one. Um, and now you can go into takeoff. Now, same as the prayer of initialization, hit once, hit twice, center of gravity. Um, for this flight, we'll select flaps five, and you'll see that we have our V speeds V1, VR, and V2. You'll also see that the trim has now become available, so if you want, so you can just put the trim to 4.25, that just helps on takeoff and makes it more smooth. Now what you can do is hit the climb button. This will give you all your climb information. If you want the max rate, max angle, whatever, that can all be changed here. Your speed restrictions, um, whatever, if you've lost an engine, follow the instructions it gives you for that. So that's everything you can sort of do there. Um, and of course, if you want an index, whatever step uh, step you're on, take off, like so. So it is quite uh, it is quite uh, simple to uh, set up. It isn't that hard. Um, so that is the basics of the FMC. Okay, so I've just been on uh, with the ground and I've been talking to them and they've told me, "All right, Captain, we got your flight ready for you, bro. Uh, all the passengers, they're going to be coming along and getting on. Oh, look." there's the bus. Um, so we're going to want to come down here to the doors page um, as you can see here and you can close and at the same time you can open doors. If you don't have GSX don't feel bad you know not everyone has GSX but it is a really nice add-on just to have. Um, also while we're here FS Actions lets you change your payload, fuel, ground connections and doors and all that sort of stuff uh, and the PMDG settings will also help you select cold dark in the first place and can also help you put random failures on and everything if you want to test yourself. But uh, since the pasture is getting on what we're going to do is we're actually going to fire up the APU because we're going to be going pretty soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and you can hear everyone getting on in the background if you listen closely. Yeah people are getting on and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn the forward fuel pump on into low pressure lights extinguished because that is where we're going to draw fuel from for the APU because what a lot of people don't know is the APU, auxiliary power unit, runs off fuel. So we're going to keep the forward fuel pump on while it draws from that and you'll see a little button that says APU here, flick it to on and then hit it again to start and it'll do that and you'll now see the EGT will slowly start to rise. So that is going to uh, start rising up and once it gets there it'll come back down uh, and then uh, we'll be ready to start. While that's starting up, we're going to come down here and set up the map. Now this is uh, quite a mistake I see quite a lot of people do. Select these two to VOR run and VOR2. So these are your standard settings by the way, so they can be changed. And then hit traffic. Because if you're on VATSIM and you don't have traffic, I'm going to tell you what you're not, you know, you know <laughs> it's going to be a little bit hard to sort how far away. I mean you, you have that and I guess that's fine, but trust me, you want the traffic rings like so. Very helpful. Sort of like fixed rings but not. Um, also while it's starting up we're going to want to put our flight directors on. Whoever's flying could be master and whoever's not flying is slave. Um, IAS we're going to check 143 which was V2 so you want to select 143. Of course that could be changed with the speed intervention. We'll go over that in the next tutorial. Runway heading. Well the runway we're taking off on is 23. So Two, three. And initial altitude, I don't know. We'll just set transition as the initial altitude, 6,000 feet. And we'll also arm VNAV and we'll arm LNAV. Okay, so we're going to go back up here and we should see that the APU is on the bus. Um, and since the light is now eliminated, we can engine one and uh, generator two. So we're now running off of APU power, so even more power to the aircraft now. And we're going to want to come up here and change this to APU. Also you're going to want to come over here and turn on the APU bleeds um, and while I'm normally here this is a chance I get to set up uh, the cruise information. So what was it we chose? 31,000 feet and I'm pretty sure the altitude of APU was like 200 or something, I don't know. So uh, G6 has said we're finished boarding so we're going to now close all the doors um, in preparation for our pushback and we'll close the cargo doors as well like so. What we can also do now is we're also going to switch uh, our auto brake to RTO reject to take off just in case anything happens on the takeoff roll we need to stop and um, that's what it's going to be. 
We'll also check that we've set current Q&H 1030 is what we've got. And we're going to come down and enter our squawk. So our squawk is going to be 2000 today, like so. Okay, so that is, we're now, as you can see, in a particular state of readiness. And I'm getting a horrible frame drop and I have no idea why. Um, so, in a basic sense, that's you ready to go. Um, there is a couple more things we just need to do. But then, other than this, you're practically set to go. So we're going to run through them now. So as you can see on our left, the ground connections have all been taken away. And we can actually go back onto our FS actions. And now take this chance to disconnect the ground power, air start unit, and the air conditioning unit. Apply parking brake. And remove the wheel chocks. Which means the aircraft is completely free from ground use. Um, and we're ready to go. We'll cite this on progress page. Or in fact, legs. So this is the state where we're pretty much ready to go. We're about to call it for pushback, but before we do that, there's a couple things we're going to want to do. First off, anti-collision lights. Let people know on the ground we're ready to start and to keep away from the aircraft because we're about to initiate start procedures. All the fuel pumps now come on, except the center ones. And unless you have fuel in them, leave the center ones off. Hydraulic demand pumps can now come on. Take the packs off, both packs, Bring them off. And what we can also do now is you can turn your probe heats and your window heats on. Okay. Come back down here and set your ignition switch to ignition right. Like so. And that is you. You're ready to go flying. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up ground and ground are going to give us a pushback. Okay, so now uh, the crew are pushing us back. If you can observe with GSX, it is below 10 degrees, so GSX have asked us to not start our engines until we're fully pushed back, just because it's chilly. So we're going to wait to get pushed back, and then we are going to start the engines. As you can see we're now pushed back and we are ready to start engines so that's exactly what we're going to do now to start engines you're going to want to come up here check that your ignition's on right and switch this to ground now if we look back down at um, our engine display we're going to observe a couple of things happening first off we're going to see that we are gaining oil pressure we'll see the n2 rise but the main one we want to look at here is n1 when this n1 gets to 2.5 we're going to uh, put the fuel cutoff switch uh, to on. So as you can see, it's at 2 now, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and we bring this uh, fuel cutoff switch on. And you're now going to be able to hear uh, the aircraft starting up. I'll hop outside and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see the engine now starting to spill up. Um, this is a really nice animation, by the way. Um, and you'll tell when it's fully spilled up, you can hear that little click in the background, so let's hop back into the cockpit um, and start the second engine. Okay, so if we look up here, we'll now see that the switch has went back to off. Select continuous, engine left, and do the exact same thing. You'll now see that the EGT is present on the first engine, the N1 is rising, the N2 is rising, we have oil pressure. Um, and if you have random based service uh, uh, random based service failures on, please observe all safety procedures. You're going to want to be looking at engine vibrations, engine temperature, all that sort of stuff if you have random failures on, because any of these can screw you over. And I'm talking from experience. There you have it, fully started up from the gate, pushed back, and that flight is ready to go. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment and subscribe, 
and we will see the next part very soon. Um, we will be covering how you take off taxi departure um, and the climb. But if you want to see that, let me know. If you don't want to see that, also let me know. Um, and remember, I am still taking flight requests and we've got a massive backlog of them because I'm trying to get all the sceneries for all of your suggestions because there are so many of them. So please keep filling them in and sending them to me. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you later.